why I don't get anything from the Bible. Here are five top reasons why you're not getting anything from the Bible and what you can do today to improve your Bible study and to get things out of the Bible. Now, the Bible is the most important book for the Christian. It's the Word of God. It's God breathed, meaning we experience the breath of God. We experience the truth of God. It guides us. It leads us. But so many people, they know they need to read the Bible. They just don't get anything out of it. And so today we're going to explore on how and why we're not getting anything out of the Bible. The first reason is people don't get anything out of the Bible because they think the Bible is about them. Now, the Scripture helps us to conquer sin, Psalm 119.11. The Scripture helps us to defeat the devil, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. The Scripture helps us to increase our faith, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And the Scripture gives us wisdom to live a godly life, Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3. But the Bible is not about us. The Bible is about God. The more you read the Bible, the more you love the author. The idea of the Bible is not so you will fall in love with the Bible. Though the scripture has many verses to say that, you know, I love your law. I love to meditate on your law. But the scripture points us to God to fall in love with the Bible. The Bible is the only book where the author is in love with the reader. It's about a relationship between the reader and the author. C.S. Lewis said, it is Christ himself, not the Bible, who is the true Word of God. The Bible, read it with the right spirit and with the guidance of the good teachers, will bring us to Him. James Merritt said, the primary purpose of reading the Bible is not to know the Bible, but to know God. In Luke chapter 24 verse 27, Luke tells us that the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So look at this, Jesus is giving them a Bible study, goes through the Old Testament and he is talking about himself in the scriptures. That's pretty much the purpose of the Bible. J Jesus even said in John chapter 5 verse 39 that you search the scriptures for in them you have eternal life. These are they which testify of me. The Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament is Christ revealed. If you don't see the scripture as its main purpose is to point you to Jesus, reveal Jesus, you will miss really about the scriptures because you'll be looking for yourself in each story instead of looking for Jesus. You're looking at David and Goliath like, yeah, I'm David, Goliath is my problem. Instead of looking, Jesus is like David and Goliath is my sin. And so this has to change our perspective on the Bible reading. The Holy Spirit doesn't exalt us, He exalts Jesus. And when you look into the Bible to find yourself instead of find God, you're not going to find a lot of truth that the Holy Spirit will highlight. Now, if you find God, you find yourself. Don't get me wrong. We find our identity in Him by looking for Him, not for ourselves. That's one of the biggest misconceptions and I believe one of the reasons why many people don't get anything out of it is because they go looking for themselves instead of going looking for God. The second reason is people don't get anything out of reading the Bible because they don't read it. Yes, Pulling a Bible promise verse is fine if you also read the Bible. But just reading a verse once in a while doesn't tell you enough of the story to really be helpful. Rehard Bonke said, the Bible is boring? Question mark. So is the television if you don't turn it on. Rehard Bonke also said, the Bible is old, so is the sun, but it's still hot. One of the reasons people use these excuses, I don't want to read the Bible, it's boring. I don't want to read the Bible, it's old. But if you don't read the Bible, you miss the opportunity for the Bible to read you. You miss the opportunity to be fed by the Word of God and to have the Holy Spirit speak to you. Jesus speaks in Matthew chapter 12 verse 3, He says, And He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? Did you catch the word, have you not read? Other references where Jesus is asking about, have you not read, are in Matthew 12, 5, Matthew 19, 4, Matthew 21, 16, and Matthew 21, 42, and Matthew 22, 31. Meaning God expects us to read His Word. Many people just simply don't read. And we kind of get these, you know, pop-up verses from our Bible app, you know, this verse for the day, and that's good, but that's like crumbs. You, you got to get a loaf. You got you to gotta sit down and digest it and read it. By reading the scriptures, 
we breathe in what God has breathed out. 2 Timothy 3 16 the Bible says that God's Word is God breathe. God breathe into His Word. When you read it you breathe in what God has breathed out. The Bible is meant to be a bread for daily use not cake for special occasions. Charles Spurgeon said and this is a good quote for those people who feel like, man, I've read it already. I know uh, what the Bible says. I need something new. And Charles Spurgeon said this, nobody ever outgrows scripture. The book widens and deepens with our years. Come on, somebody. That means every time you read it, it's different. It's kind of like food. You, you don't say, well, I already ate an apple five years ago, so I don't want to eat an apple. I had breakfast yesterday. So I don't want to eat breakfast anymore. Nobody says that about food. So don't think of the Bible as book. Think of the Bible as spiritual food for your spiritual person. Reading is the way you take in the Word of God. And if you don't read it, you don't get anything out of it. Now the third reason why people don't get anything out of the Bible is because they don't understand what they read. Matthew 13, 19, Jesus speaks of the parable and he says that when somebody hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked comes in and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Now the simple explanation of this is you hear God's word or you read God's word, you absolutely have no idea what it says. You don't understand it. Now there might be spiritual blockages and we're going to mention that in just a moment, but sometimes it's the practical one. And one of the practical ones is that people have a translation that they read they don't understand. Now the best translation to read is the one that you will read and apply. No translation is perfect because the New Testament was written in Greek. And there are five million words in Greek and about one million words in English. I mean, for example, word love in English, there's five words in Greek for word love. So the translations are not going to be perfect. But you're looking for something that you will understand. Now, when it comes to translation, there are two types of translations. There's the, the devotional reading, the paraphrase of the devotional reading, living Bible, the message, the passion. Devotional reading can be thought for thought, NIV and NLT. Some of the best translations also NIV and NLT. That's for devotional reading. Then there's the deeper study. That's the New King James, that's the NASB, ESV translations are for deeper study. So if you are reading King James and you're a new believer and you're not understanding anything, you might want to go to like NLT or NIV. So pick a translation that you can understand because then you can really apply what you understand. Mark Batterson said, when you open the Bible, God opens His mouth. See, when you don't open the Bible to read it and your excuse is, I don't understand it, you're not going to hear God speak. Someone said that complaining about a silent God with a closed Bible is like complaining that no text messages are coming in with a turned off phone. Ouch. That means that you got to turn it on. You got to start reading. Read with the translation you understand. Reading no Bible for seven days will make one weak. Weak as like not seven day weak, but weak meaning not strong. So why do I get nothing out of the Bible? Well, one, maybe you're looking for yourself there instead of God. Number two is, are you reading the Bible? Are you reading it with a translation you can understand? Now we'll give right away a solution for that. People don't get anything out of the Bible because they don't team up with the Holy Spirit to read the Bible. Now humans wrote the Bible with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He is the ultimate author and the writer of the Bible. Now Smith Wigglesworth said this, some people like to read their Bibles in the Hebrew, some like to read it in the Greek. I like to read it in the Holy Spirit. Come on somebody. Smith Wigglesworth also said this, if I read the newspaper, I come out dirtier than I went in. If I read my Bible, I come out cleaner than I went in and I like being clean. In fact, he is known to be the person who, when people would come with a newspaper to his house, he would not allow them to come in until they leave the newspaper out. He says, I don't want this stuff in my house. He was radical about letting God's Word to be inside of his house and inside of his life. Now, when it comes to reading the Bible with the Holy Spirit, here's some practical things that you can do. You must understand is the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. 
He is the author of the Bible. The Holy Spirit moved upon men and women who prophesied, who declared these utterances from God. So He is your best help to know the Scriptures. When you read the Bible, invite the Holy Spirit prayerfully. Bow your head in prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. Teach me. Bring to my remembrance. Help me to understand. Enlighten me. Quicken this Word that it will speak to me. You know, put the distractions aside and then read the translations. You can understand. Read with a highlighter. Read with a pen. If you can read the physical Bible, it's easier and better than reading sometimes on your phone where there could be all kinds of notifications. And so if you're reading on the phone as well, turn off the notifications uh, so that they don't distract you. And then without distraction, just read God's Word. Reread the same thing again. Don't just try to get through the reading plan. Let the reading get inside of you. Let the Word get inside of you. Pause and ponder. When it speaks to you, maybe you write something in the journal. Ask the Lord, what does this mean? How does this apply to me? Who is Jesus in this verse? There's a good way of reading the scriptures that uses the word soap. S for scripture, O for observation, A for application, and then P for prayer. If you want to engage with the Holy Spirit while reading the Bible, read the scripture. Then observe what you've read. Ask yourself, how does this apply to my life? What does God want me to do with this? And then pray about it. Before you read, invite the Holy Spirit and He will help you to have a revelation of the information that you are consuming, that you are reading. And it will bring spiritual transformation in your life. The fifth reason why people don't get anything out of the Bible is because they don't know how to study the Bible. So it's important to read the Scriptures, listen to the Scriptures. We also have to learn to study the Scripture. Now we see that Paul tells Timothy to rightly divide the Word of Truth. There are a few things you have to understand about studying the Bible. There's the exegesis and eisegesis. Now exegesis is drawing the meaning out of the text, meaning you want the text to impose the meaning to you. Eisegesis is you're imposing the meaning onto a text. The meaning of the text that you are reading is always determined by the author and it has to be discovered by you. So think of this, it's like gold that is hidden in the ground. You have to dig it out. You don't decide where it's laid. You discover it by developing it, by you know getting the dirt out and by doing a little bit of work. So there's some practical things that you can do with studying the Bible. Read the chapter before, read the chapter that you've read and read the chapter after. Those things just will help you to kind of catch the meaning of what these authors are speaking about. Read the theme of the book. There are so many good Bible studies that give you a little like breakdown of when the book was written, why the book was written, to whom the book was written, what challenges were they trying to resolve, which doctrines they were trying to correct, special like epistles. So it gives you like a little understanding and you have to honestly put their filter on your mind because if you're going as an American or as a person, maybe a Western person or a person that's watching in your country going through your own challenges and everything, then it's there's nothing wrong with getting an application from the scripture. But you must understand everything you read has one interpretation and many applications. Before you get to the application part, you have to understand the interpretation of it. Meaning, what is it saying? Why is it saying that? To whom is this author writing? And so all of that could be helped with a little bit of work, both using some study Bibles, using some other translations, and reading some commentaries. While commentaries are good, study Bibles are good, please understand you want the Scripture to interpret the Scripture. As in Acts chapter 17, 11, we learn that we need to rely on the Scripture to interpret the Scripture. The study guides, the commentaries are supplements. The Scripture is the source and we have to stick with the Scripture. Scripture is written in such a way that a child can understand it. That's why even children read Scripture and stuff. Of course, more of a easy way to understand. So allow the Holy Spirit to help you do this, some digging. There's so many Bible apps now and Bible websites that you can go in and actually click on the word of the text that you're reading and it could give you the translation of the word, what the word means, uh, how this word is being used in other parts of the scripture. And so do a little bit of work. Do not be lazy when it comes to studying the Bible. Many people, they don't read the Bible, they don't invite the Holy Spirit, 
and then they're just a little bit lazy when it comes to reading the Bible. And then they're like, well, I don't get anything out of it. Well, if you don't put any effort into it, if you don't do any diligence into it, then you're not going to get the gold and the, the, the preciousness of what the Bible has for us. There is a spiritual blockage. We know that a demon is not behind every bush, but sometimes spiritual forces can hinder us. If you think there might be a spiritual blockage, talk to your local pastor who does a demon deliverance or begin to resist, you know, against the demonic spirits. Now, I want to mention something. Maybe you are reading the Bible when you are super exhausted and tired. Or maybe you're reading the Bible and you have a television on and you are distracted. Like, that's not a demon. That's a distraction. Turn off the TV. You know, maybe get good night rest or maybe you're more rested and awakened in the evening. Read during the time when you are most alert. Don't try to read it when you're most tired. Though I'm not against reading the scripture before going to sleep and falling asleep with reading the scripture. I think it's also very good. It's way better than watching, you know, television, TV shows or scrolling through social media. So we have to do some practical parts before we go in and blame everything on the devil. But I do believe that sometimes there's a spiritual hindrance that exists for people to not study the Bible and read the Bible. Deal Moody said, the Bible will keep you from sin or the sin will keep you from the Bible. Satan is interested in keeping you away from the Bible because then he'll keep you in sin. Matthew 13, 4, it says, As he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. What does that mean? It means the devil really wants to get you out of God's Word. He wants to steal God's Word. Because if the Bible is not getting into you, the devil has already got into your business. Ouch. And that's true. One of the first temptations the devil has given to humanity in Genesis 3:1 is to doubt God's Word. The devil knows he can't defeat you unless he disarms you and he can't disarm you unless you doubt God's Word. The devil wants you to doubt God's Word or not to divide God's Word rightly. For example, you look at Jesus' temptation and you see that when Jesus fought back the devil's temptation with the Scripture, the devil came back using the Scripture. Well, actually abusing the Scripture, pulling the Scripture out of context. And so I do see these two big temptations when it comes to the devil being involved in pulling Christians away from the Bible and that is causing them to doubt it and then to cause them to not divide the Word of God rightly. When we begin to take Scripture out of context and so many on fire Christians do that with the Bible and they fall into the trap of the enemy because the devil did that. Now some do it out of ignorance, some do it out of impatience, some do it out of laziness and some do it out of totally just being blinded by the enemy and they keep saying things like God told me, God told me and it contradicts the Bible. It's not in the scripture. We have to be it is written people. We have to be people that live by the Bible, live by the book and led by the Holy Spirit. If you're experiencing demonic attacks and you're noticing you absolutely just not able to read the Bible, constantly fall asleep and you can watch television, you can scroll through the social media and you're alert, you're awake but when it comes to the Bible you're just like snoozing and always falling asleep. Ask for prayer. Ask for people to pray for you, to break things off of you. You know maybe you have unconfessed sin that you need to repent in your life that is spiritually blocking your sensitivity and your hunger for God. And a lot of times that's the case is there's some open doors that we left that are opening doors to spiritual deadness where we spiritually just kind of like absolutely feel no hunger for the Word of God. Repent of those sins, forsake those ways, ask somebody to minister to you and pray for you. And then look at these tips that I've given you today like reading the Bible, like looking for the Jesus in the Bible, like reading the translation you understand, like asking the Holy Spirit to help you, like uh, doing a little bit more of diligence to understand the scripture by diligent study of the scripture and then resisting the doubt and the lies of the enemy and resisting the pool of the enemy to also take the scripture out of context because that is the enemy's trap because then we can build doctrines based on our experiences we can build doctrines based on well this is what I think about it you know but it's not actually true because we're not rightly dividing the word of God and so we have to do our due diligence that we present God's word in the way that God's word needs to be presented and then the Holy Spirit will back it up. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what are some things you are doing as your personal habit to get more out of the scripture. Share your thoughts, experiences with us below this video.